Hello Year 6 and welcome to today's science lesson. Today we are going to be learning more about light and what the different light sources are and how we can protect from the sun. We are also going to be doing an experiment and if you have these things, it's okay if you don't have them, it would be helpful for you to get them ready now. You will need a paper towel or you can use uh, tissue paper or toilet paper instead. Aluminium foil, if you don't have it, it's fine. Cardboard, you are likely to have some cardboard around the house. If you don't have cardboard, you can just use paper. And a sandwich bag or a plastic bag or cling film. Right, and then if you have a torch or an iPhone that has a torch or some kind of other light, that would be helpful. And if you have some sunscreen lying around the house, it would be helpful to get that too, because we're going to be taking a closer look at this and why they are important. Right. In addition to this, of course, you will also need your lined paper if you have it and a pen or something to write with. OK, let's get started with today's exciting science lesson. I'm just going to share my screen with you. OK, so. Today we are going to be learning about light and where what different light sources are and how we can protect from the sun. OK, now let's start this off with a quiz reviewing some of our knowledge from last term. Please write down the answers in your book. Question one, what is at the center of an atom? What is at the center? So what's in the middle of an atom? Pause this video now and write down your answer. Question two, in order for a current to flow, the circuit needs to be open or closed? In order for a current to flow, the circuit needs to be open or closed? And question three, what orbits the center of the atom? So what goes around, what spins around the center of the atom? And question four, electrons move through a current. Is this true or false? Electrons move through a current, true or false? Please pause this video now and write down your answers before we go through the answers together. So what is at the centre of the atom? It is the nucleus. The nucleus is in the middle of the atom. In order for a current to flow, the circuit needs to be closed. If it's open, if there's a gap, then the current won't flow and the light bulb will not shine. Question three, what orbits the centre of the atom? Electrons, so the electrons spin around the centre of the atom, spin around the nucleus. And question four, electrons move through a current. This is true. OK, well done. Let's move on to reviewing some vocabulary that you would have learnt in year three. So casting your mind back. Please repeat after me. Ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays, also known as UV rays, are short rays coming from the sun, as we see in this picture here, towards the Earth. They go through what's known as the ozone layer and they then eventually possibly land on your skin. Vitamin D. Vitamin D is produced in our skin and by our bodies when we are in the sun and vitamin D is really good and important for you and helps your immune system. So it's important to get in the sun so you get a bit of vitamin D. But as we'll learn, it's important not to spend too much time in the sun because that can also be damaging. Opaque. When something is opaque, when a material is opaque, it is the opposite of transparent, which means you can't see through it. Light doesn't go through it. So, for example, if you have really murky, dark, dirty water, that water is opaque. We're going to be learning more about which materials are opaque and which materials are transparent. Reflected. Light is reflected off 
surfaces and objects, and that is how we see. So when something bounce, when light bounces off a surface and goes straight back and, and goes into our eyes, that is light being reflected. Ozone layer. So in this picture here, we see the blue ring. That is the ozone layer. It is a layer around the in the atmosphere of the Earth that the ultraviolet rays pass through and we see a picture here of the ozone layer in the year 2000 compared to it now and we can see that there was a hole in the ozone layer in 2000 and there is still a hole but the hole is smaller this hole was caused by gases produced by humans and we produce less of these gases they're cdc gases often that were used to be found in aerosol canisters but because they removed they stopped putting these gases in canisters the ozone layer, the hole in the ozone layer has shrunken, but it's important for the ozone layer to stay thick because that's what traps the ultraviolet rays. OK, here's a question for you. What are some different sources of light? I would like you to make a list in your book of all the different light sources you can think of. Put, do as many as you can. Th try for, to list 10 different types of light sources and they can be natural or man-made. So take a moment to pause this video and write down some light sources. Uh, there's a few pictures here to give you some ideas. Not all of these are sources of light, so they're here to trick you, for example. Spoons and forks and knives and uh, vacuum cleaner are not sources of light. So don't just go copying everything that's here, but have a think. For example, a chair, is that a source of light? A source means somewhere that light comes from. So pause this video now and write down some different light sources. OK, well, here's some ideas for what you could have come up with. The sun, lightning, glow worms, torches, stars, computers, fires, lamps, candles and iPhones. You might have written some others, which would be absolutely great. Now, what I would like you to do is please draw this table with two columns natural and man-made and then fill in each column saying whether by putting objects in your list in these columns saying whether they're natural so whether they're produced by earth naturally occurring or whether they're made by man so i have modeled this for you in this video here for you to see right before I drew the table, I of course drew today's date, which is Monday, the 22nd of February 2021, and written the question What are some different light sources? Then I've underlined it using a ruler and I've written the subtitle, which is Categorizing Sources of Light. Then I need to write my two headings for my two columns, natural and man-made. Then I use a ruler to underline it. And I start and I methodically went through these pictures. You can you don't have to use these pictures, but you can use the list that you made or you can use these pictures. It doesn't matter as long as you categorize them depending on whether they're natural or man-made. The sun is natural. Lightning is natural. A glow worm occurs in nature. It's natural. A torch. Hmm. Batteries is man-made. Stars are natural. Then a computer. Computer is man-made because it requires electricity. Fire start fires. Fires can, uh, can occur naturally. Lamps are made by humans. Uh, iPhones certainly are man-made and candle is man-made even though you might think it's natural it is actually made by man so please pause this video now and write out your own columns with your own objects or you can include some of these different light sources I look forward to seeing your list
please pause this video now and complete your list. OK, here's a new question for you. How does light change in a room throughout the day? If you are currently sitting in a room with a window that has light coming in, you might be able to see which way the light is pointing. So as the as the sun moves through the sky throughout the day, the light will change. And I would like you to observe how it changes and think about that. And we'll return more to this question in a later lesson. But I'd like you to think about the way the shadow moves. OK, here's the question. How do we see? There are various stages. And what's important to note is that light travels in straight lines from the source to the object. So does light move in jiggity jaggedy wavy lines? No, light moves in straight lines, straight like a ruler, from the light source to the object. So we're pretending that we're looking at an apple. It starts at the light the source and then moves towards the object. Once light hits the apple, it is reflected off in the opposite direction. So it lands on the apple and then the light bounces off in a straight line and the light from the apple is reflected into the eye. And that is how we see. OK, the next question is, can sun be dangerous? Hmm, well, we learned a little bit about ultraviolet rays earlier. So we know that sunlight provides us with vitamin D, which is good for us. So it's important to get a bit of sun, especially in the winter. But ultraviolet rays are short light rays from the sun. They move from the sun towards the earth through the ozone layer, which filters out a lot of UV rays. But UV rays can cause skin aging, wrinkling and sunburn. Now, of course, you don't need to worry about skin aging and wrinkling, but you do need to worry about sunburn because if you spend too long in the sun the ultraviolet rays can be damaging for your skin and cause sunburn okay so how can you protect from the sun well you don't have to worry about this in the winter but in the summer it's important not to spend too long in the sun so you can move into the shade after spending a bit of time in the sun you can apply sunscreen so at the beginning of this video, I asked you to get out your sunscreen. So I'm going to come off this for a moment, share screen, so that you can see. This is a sunscreen and it's got SPF 50. All sun cream will tell you how strong it is. So you should put on a minimum of 30. I usually put on 50 to protect my skin. OK, let's go back to sharing the screen and looking at other ways in which we can protect ourselves from the sun. So you can also wear a hat, sunglasses, make sure your sunglasses have UV ray protection, drink plenty of water to stay hydrated and if you do get burnt you can put on aloe vera on your skin. Right. Now Eyesight does change when we get older. Our eyes get worse the, when we get older. For example, when I was young, I didn't need glasses and now I wear glasses. And in 30, 40, 50 years, my eyesight will get worse. And that is just part of getting older and it's, it's just a normal process. So we can see here that this old man is getting his eyesight checked. OK. Now, let's move on to the exciting part, which is the experiment. So this experiment, we're going to look at which materials can light pass through them. We're going to be looking at paper towels, sandwich bags, cardboard, tinfoil and glass. If you don't have if you don't have these objects, it's absolutely fine. You can substitute them with similar objects or just leave them out if you don't have them. So what you need to do is get a torch. And I am going to use my iPhone, which has a torch, but you might have an actual torch. And then let me come off share screen. Right. What you need to do is we're going to start with the paper towel, which is here. And you're going to 
shine your light source, your torch, through the material. Now, make sure that it's probably about 10 centimeters away from it. And you need to ask yourself, can light pass through this? Well, I think the answer here is clearly yes. So next question is, is this material opaque? So opaque means light cannot pass through it. And the answer is no. OK, so that is our first one done. The paper towel light can pass through it and it is therefore not opaque. OK, my second material is going to be the sandwich bag or plastic bag. If you don't have that, you can use cling film. And can light pass through it? Yes, it certainly can. Light passing through it. So the answer is yes. And is it opaque? No, it's not opaque. So then I would put no in my no column for that. Now, next I'm going to look at cardboard. Cardboard. Let's try and see where the light can pass through that. Can you see any light coming through? Nope. So light cannot pass through cardboard. Therefore, is it opaque? Yes, it is. And we're going to do tin foil next. What's your prediction? What do you think? Let's have a look. No light is coming through this tin foil. Absolutely no light. It's being reflected back, but it's not going through. So is it opaque? Yes, it is. And finally, I'm going to use a glass cup and we're going to see whether light can pass through it. Yes, that is light passing through it. You don't need to have water in it. And therefore, is glass opaque? No, it is not. Right, let me show you how to set this out uh, in your books. So what I would like you to do here is write, oh, I need to share my screen. There we go. Write the title, which is Materials Under Investigation. And then you need three columns. Your three columns should be material name, can light pass through it, and is it opaque? And then you need to write down your five materials. If you would like, you can add other materials. You can add cloth or other materials that you might like that are fire safe. Plastic bag, tin foil. And finally, glass cup. Then use a ruler to neatly draw your borders and then write down your results. So paper towel, we could remember that light did pass through it. So it's not opaque. So we did a Y there for a yes and an N there for a no. Plastic bag, did light pass through it? Yes. Is it therefore opaque? No. Cardboard, light did not pass through it and therefore it's opaque. Tin foil, did light pass through it? No. Is it opaque? Yes. Glass cup, did light pass through it? Yes. Is it opaque? No. Right, I hope you've enjoyed that science experiment year six. We're going to be learning more about light this whole term and next lesson we are going to be learning a different topic related to light. I can't wait to see your experiment results uploaded onto Cecil. Bye, year six.